I know Death. He's got many faces. I look forward to seeing this one. What do you want me to say? Nothing. Do you want me to start saying some things? <laughs> I'm saying good things no, about I you. Don't know. It feels I felt pretty on instant the edge. connection. A lot of memories, cuts and bruises, and some and lovely... friendships that will last a lifetime. I just can't wait till it's all over and then we can talk about it. Yeah. I really have enjoyed the the, the journey as a as a whole. It's extraordinary when you've got 80 hours of TV. You can let stories unravel at a much more kind of lifelike rate, I suppose, you know, and things unfold in ways that you don't expect. Red Wedding. That episode was just crazy. The Lannisters and their regards. <laughs> oh, I, I'm such a cliche because the two moments for me is the decapitation of Sean's character and then the red wedding. That was where you were like, holy moly, what's going on? Where's my father? I want to see my father. It will all be over soon, princess. For some, whatever reason, I think I was in emotional space that night when I watched it, and I didn't know it was coming. Uh, it was Shireen's death. Mother! I can't. There's no other way. She's king's blood. Please, Lord of Light, protect us. Please, father! With the light is with, oh, with, the with her father yes, 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 yes. watching. Ah! He's like, come on. That was really upsetting. I, I felt oh. I couldn't climb up out of that mood for a while after seeing that. I saw the king. He's got hundreds of people. How many times have I told you no climbing? For Bran, I just think he's had the most extraordinary character arc because in the first episode, it's kind of made clear that Bran is, is not a very uh, strong, strong contender in, in the Game of Thrones world. <laughs> he's now become one of the most powerful characters in Westeros, and I think it's just a really great message um, for, for one of these, you know, these, these characters whose weapons are their minds. Ravens. We need to send ravens. Yeah. It's more brain than brawl, you know. The pie flicking <gasps> thing. Yeah. The pigeon pie. Oh, pigeon pie and that Arya flicks face. pigeon pie at me, and I remember, like, overacting the hell out of that scene. <laughs> 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 and everyone laughing at me. I'm not your traveling companion. We are traveling together in each other's company. Therefore, Do you ever shut up. I love going on the journey with Peter Dinklage. Um, during that season, we had a re we you know we had great fun doing that. All I've ever wanted was to serve you. I love you. I'll always love you. But Daenerys and being by her side has always been kind of my strongest uh, associations. I return to your service, my queen. If you'll have me. It would be my honor. In her line of things, right through all the seasons, we were all, we, we lived a very peripatetic existence. We're always on the move, and, and that was a lovely thing. So I enjoyed all the various locations that the crews look forward to. So, yeah. All my life I've been hearing Jamie Lannister. What a brilliant swordsman. He was slower than I expected. Just but I, I think it's safe to say that you have just grown. Stop it as a human being. Really? Beyond it is so a, sad just when he actress. shows this side of himself. A childhood must have been awful for you. Were you a foot taller than all the boys? The mad, it, delusional <laughs> egomaniac that also with a strange Svengali complex. You have done nothing other than agitate me. You move well. A great beast of a woman. Typically male, your attitude towards me. You believe that you oh, made me. Believe that you made, you made me. I don't. Oh, I don't believe I made you. Really? I've just helped. Right. Okay. You've done the. You've done the bulk yeah, of the yeah. work yourself. Okay. <laughs> okay. You've proven yourself the greatest captain on the fourteen seas, and a true friend to the crown. The scenes with Jamie and Cersei in the throne room. There's nothing quite like it, is there? The love of the people. And on the boat where he gets to slaughter a lot of people. I have a come and get her. And then he sees uh, Elfie's character jump off. He like jump overboard. <laughs> Season seven was fun for my character. I think probably the best time I had filming was season seven with the loot train. 
I had a whole month in the Spanish hills there mm. with an incredible bunch of people, you know, and creating that battle. For Bron to have his kind of moment of glory, I was really pleased because I was itching for a bit of action because I'd been a few seasons without any decent battles. And that, that was uh, really fun to do. Everything you did brought you where you are now. Where you belong. Oh, Game of Thrones kind of has been my life. It wasn't, it's quite hard to remember um, life before Thrones because I was like 10. Wow. Definitely been a, 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 an unusual experience to most other. Uh, Half your life? Kids. Yeah. Wow. Samuel Tarling of Horn Hill. I mean, I was of Horn Hill. I've come to take the black. My first day was, was very, very odd for me because it was, it was my first day's professional work as an actor. I yield! Please, no more! So I arrived on the first day and just didn't know anything. We did, we did three hours camera training at, at, at school and then my fourth hour was in Game of Thrones. So I, I, I found that really kind of, I felt like a real fish out of water and kind of really hard to adjust to. I had no idea that a working day could take so long. I remember having these dresses on that were really long and it was really muddy so we had to clip up our dresses yeah. and then I remember like not being trusted ever to eat my lunch yeah. without a blanket, like a bib, bib blanket. Like, yeah. It was kind of bibs. humiliating honestly. I mean I was definitely like a child but I was like, I'm a grown up now but yeah. I like would 100% get gravy and peas all over my dress. <laughs> yeah you would. <laughs> It's yeah. quite an aria thing to do, though. Isn't yeah, it? that's it was it's very on character, brand. Yeah. very on brand. Um, I didn't think we'd get along because the I first knew from time the moment I, saw I met Nikolai, he was off with me. You're much happier in daylight. I saw him in a makeup truck. Someone said I was very, I was very nervous because I thought I thought Nikolai was a great actor, and they said, "Do you want to meet Nikolai?" And I said, "No, I'm really nervous." And they said, "No, he's fine." I went in, and he's sitting in the chair and looked at me and just looked me up and down and said, "Yes." And that's how we met. And then the, after that, and I got annoyed actually, because really no one had treated annoyed. me like that before. And then the next time was at the read through when you marched up to me and said, we need to go and rehearse now. And I said, well, I'm actually having something. And you said, well, I hope you're not going to be difficult about all Did this. I? Wow. That's what you said. Really and then Nina my... Gold said, Nina Gold said, oh, this is great. This is exactly what we wanted. We didn't know it would turn out like this. It's a long way to King's Landing. Might as well get to know one another. That's somehow Never once I, that's did not, I. That's, really, what do you, what do you no, remember? I just, I actually remember that we instantly hit it off. Valyrian steel. Hmm. It's yours. <laughs> Where? It was just like, like, do you want to go have a drink? Yes, let's go have a drink. We would talk about personal stuff, <laughs> once love life. <laughs> And I realised that... <laughs> stop it! Just stop it! I'm proud of you. I am. Yeah, on my first day, I was in this oasis in Morocco. It's this beautiful thing and there's like hundreds of people, not just crew, there's like supporting artists and horses and they like blocked out this whole area. And, um, and just thinking, like, I'm definitely gonna get fired. There's no way they're gonna bring me back. They're just gonna reshoot this with somebody else, I'm sure. And then on my last day, I remember feeling really like, I'm a part of this. Like, I felt like I really belonged. I didn't want to, like, leave something that felt like such a big part of my life. What do you remember from your last day? Um, I remember thinking that I wasn't going to humiliate myself by crying. Crying and crying and crying. Yeah was connected to uh, to seven years of your life and it sort of all passed through me and I just got extremely emotional. I was kind of just in denial. I remember just trying not to think about it, doing everything I could to not think about it. Yeah. I thought that I was on for another couple of days. I had no idea it was my last day. So I was just totally bewildered and lost. Went home, had a cup of tea and two hours later, I think there were tears in my eyes going, oh my God, I'm not going back. That was, it was weird. They would say cut and I'd think, oh my God, this is it. And I'd like start crying and then they'd be like, 
Uh, moving on to the next setup, and then I'd have to like, be like, okay. Save it, save it. Keep it together, keep it together. You, you couldn't deal with it at the time because you, you were still working. So you had to kind of suppress all those uh, kind of emotions. And, 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 and finally, um, there was three of us finished at exactly the same time, and I was trying to keep a stiff upper lip, as they say. But once the first person started to go, my chin started wobbling, then the second one, then it, oh, it was gone. It was, it was, I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't be all manly. It was a relief and, 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 and some, something very sad and something nice as well because you feel like you're given everything and, 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 and everything has an end. Even Game of Thrones.